Hey everyone, this is Nick and the Linux desktop is getting increasingly accessible and user-friendly by the day. Desktop environments are now super easy to use and understand. We have better hardware compatibility than ever before. Gaming on Linux is now a thing. We've got app stores to install thousands of apps in one click and we have tons of efforts to polish and improve the user experience. And yet, some people in the Linux community think that making Linux more accessible and more user-friendly also means that we're dumbing it down, that we're making it less powerful and less capable. And this notion isn't new. I found traces dating back to 2000 where people were asking the same question. Are we dumbing Linux down? And yes, in the 2000s, Linux was basically unusable on the desktop by anybody who was non-technical. And still, people had like issues and reservations with the efforts trying to make Linux more accessible. So let's see if these concerns are justified. But they'll never be as justified as using today's sponsor to run your gaming or Linux servers. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the best choice to deploy your own Linux or gaming server. Getting started is extremely easy thanks to their app marketplace. You can just pick from one of the many, many apps they offer, select a few configuration options, and just one click deploy that server. It's super simple. It works for a development environment, but also for a Minecraft or Valheim server. Among the most notable apps, Linode has Moodle to create your own learning management system and teach and sell courses in minutes, but they also have stuff like Pi-hole to block ads. Even though Linus said it's piracy. From Focal Board, a Trello alternative to Rocket Chat, which is the equivalent to Slack or Teams, Linode has everything you would want. Click the link in the description to get your $100 credits and get started. So, the Linux desktop is getting more user-friendly. There is no doubt about it. There is still more work to be done and all desktop environments aren't taking the same approach to this. But the main point is getting more user-friendly means getting more accessible. Being user-friendly means offering users tours of the user interface to let them get to grips with how things work. It means having a legible user interface, well-designed and with the most prominent features, the ones 99% of people will actually use, being put front and center. Power user features can also be there, but they don't have to be in the spotlight. Yeah, I'm talking about dual panes in the file manager, about the inspector to see the source code of a web page in a web browser. I'm talking viewing the metadata for an image file. Those are interesting and useful things, but they should not be prominent in the user interface because 99% of people will never actually use these features. Being user-friendly means having simple, legible apps that do one thing and do it well, having an easy to understand default desktop and metaphor, and supporting accessibility features for people with disabilities. That's something we still need to work on on Linux. The goal is to not be confusing or drown the user in buttons, menus, features, applications, system tools and settings that they will never use and will just confuse them. That doesn't mean users are stupid or can't handle five preferences in the file manager. It just means that the default should be very simple and the power user features should be hidden away, accessible, easy to use, but not there to be seen by everybody. KDE has actually a great approach to this, although we could also argue that there is still some work needed to curb the, the settings and feature creep in that desktop and make every single default app more simple, although I'm sure some Plasma users will now be insulting me for that opinion. GNOME is another extreme example. They don't shoot for power users. They shoot for keep it stupid simple, and they mostly succeed. This means leaving out some of the less used preferences, to keep things simple, tidy, and make sure beginners, whatever their computer experience is, can use it easily. And they also keep a lot of stuff configurable, either through deconf or extensions. I made a video about that, check it out in the card up top. On the KDE side, the motto is simple by default, powerful when you need it, which I would say is similar to what GNOME offers, except KDE ships all the settings and modules out of the box, so you don't have to add anything to configure stuff. Their recent design trend of removing menu bars, simplifying toolbars, and having hamburger menus to let more advanced users find what they need is a very good design choice. It lets you use the app even if you're just trying to copy-paste files in Dolphin, and if you want your file manager to do as many things as Emacs, it still can. 
What I'm trying to convey here is that our desktops are user-friendly, whether it's Skeddy or Gnome or Cinnamon, but it doesn't mean that they're dumbed down. Being user-friendly doesn't mean that we need less options, less preferences, or to get rid of the command line entirely, or only have projects with three buttons that even a baby could use. It means we need the major projects on Linux to be usable by anyone, however technical they are. It means letting everyone understand what they're doing and how the system reacts. And yes, it means preventing users to do destructive things that they didn't know would result in breakage, data loss, or hardware damage. And I think this is a goal that everybody can get behind, making our Linux desktops easier, more accessible, more usable. Even if you don't think that Linux needs to have more users and more people, even if you think that Linux is fine as it is, it should be a goal that everybody is interested in, making sure that everything works, is polished, and is usable by everyone. It doesn't mean that we're gonna turn our desktops into some kind of Fisher-Price toy that looks like Windows XP. Now, all these changes to be more user-friendly, they don't remove anything, and they don't prevent power users to still use Linux how they want to or how they used to. The command line is still there. All desktops have a terminal emulator and access to multiple TTYs. Options are still there in KDE, in GNOME, in Cinnamon. You have tons of preferences, panels, extensions, configuration options, and various apps you can use to replace the components you don't like or you'd prefer not to use. If you think about it, even GNOME is way more configurable than the default Windows experience. You can tweak it and change it a lot more than you can on Windows. You still get access to the full file system when you want it through the file manager or the command line. You can still install and compile anything you want. And you can still completely break and destroy your system if that's something that you want to do. No one is stopping you. And it's gonna give you that extra excuse to install that shiny new distro that's making bedroom eyes at you. You know you want to. If something feels dumbed down, it's easily replaceable. Don't like a file manager? Install another one. You can even decide to use Plasma with all GNOME apps if you want, or GNOME Shell plus only KDE applications. Nothing has been removed, nothing has been dumbed down. Okay, that's not entirely true. There were some compromises being made in order to achieve the new Linux desktop vision. I'm talking about the Wayland, Flatpak, Portals, image-based systems vision for the Linux desktop. Wayland, for example, does remove a few features from x.org. X could let you display a device's stuff on another device through the network, for example. Wayland doesn't do that. Wayland also means most of the implementation has to be done in the window manager and compositor. So gone are the days of smaller window managers that could be written in a few days. But Wayland also offers a bunch of new stuff that simply couldn't be done in x.org, like different refresh rates or scaling on different monitors, treating each monitor as a separate surface. And people who still prefer using x.org can. I do on my desktop, it still works, and it will work for a long time even though no one really wants to work on it anymore or add features for it. It's still there. Now there's also the GNOME 2 to GNOME 3 transition. And oh boy, was that one messy. When GNOME 3 released, people were so angry that it resulted in the creation of three new desktops, Unity, Mate, and Cinnamon. GNOME 2 was beloved and GNOME 3 removed a lot of the customization and the power people were used to. That sentiment stuck to GNOME but it's just untrue nowadays. Over the course of its life, GNOME has added back all the features GNOME 2 had and can now be even more customizable and powerful than GNOME 2 ever could be with extensions. So sure, there was a trade-off at the beginning and there still is one if you prefer the GNOME 2 defaults over the GNOME 3 ones. But the end result is a more modern desktop, not just in terms of how it looks or works, but also in terms of performance, underlying technologies or hardware utilization. And again, people who want to use what GNOME 2 was have MATE. Then there's flatpacks and portals. Again, a technology you don't have to use, but that I would expect to become the standard quite fast. These can introduce limitations. The permission system isn't perfect, and permissions can be incorrectly set, so your app doesn't have access to the file system when it needs it, for example. Screen sharing can require you to press a button to authorize it, and using an app store to install stuff is definitely less efficient than the command line, if you know what you're doing. So the flatpak syntax for installing apps turns into a nightmare compared to apt or DNF. 
It's still more legible than the syntax for Pac-Man, for example. Seriously, what the hell is it with these letters that have no correlation to the word or the action that they refer to? It's nuts. Basically, the sentiment seems to be, we're making Linux more accessible to a vast number of beginners and non-technical users at the detriment of technical power users. And while there's a bit of truth to that, the modularity of Linux means that these power users can still run the setup they like and use their systems like they want to. The defaults are not tailored to power users anymore, but that doesn't mean they can't still do whatever they want. Now there's another underlying issue with making the Linux desktop more accessible. New users generally don't really need help to get set up and begin. They don't really need to ask questions anymore. They can just burn their live USB, install the distro and start using it. There are no major roadblocks anymore. But this also means that when they're confronted with a real big issue, they don't really have the etiquette needed to talk online about that issue or ask their questions. This means that they duplicate forum threads, that they duplicate bug reports, or that they don't really ask in a way that's perceived as nice or polite or, or how people are used to interact with others on forums. And that's a problem because these new users will then get treated very badly because they don't really know how to express themselves on a forum or in a bug report because they never had to do it from the beginning of using Linux. So sure, making our Linux desktops easier to use, more secure and advancing them technologically to really take advantage of new hardware does come with some compromises. As more and more people are able to just pick up a distro, install it and run it, we remove barriers to entry, but we also remove a technical requirement on our users, which means that in our current imperfect state, where issues still appear, these non-technical users don't really know how to act. It also means that some features that weren't all that useful to the vast majority of computer users are being neglected or removed in favor of stuff that most computer users would prefer, like better multi-monitor support in exchange for network display. These are growing pains and sure, the Linux desktop has been growing for a long while now and new growing pains keep popping up to replace the ones that we had already fixed. But I'm still convinced that fixing these issues will not make the Linux desktop less powerful. The terminal is a given. It will always be at the core of Linux for people who want it. Choices and options will always be present in one desktop environment or the other. That's the basis of open source. Beginners are getting a simpler default experience, more guided, with simple apps, no headaches. And power users can still replace components, tweak their systems and do anything they want to their heart's content. The community's efforts have made developing, distributing and installing applications a breeze, something that has always been a pain point for Linux when you had to package your app 20 times to reach the majority of users. Security is being improved with sandboxed apps, portals and permissions so apps can't just access whatever they want, read the whole screen, and you get more control over them. I really don't feel that the Linux desktop has been dumbed down since I started using it in 2006. If anything, it's gotten more powerful, but graphically, and the underlying power is still there. So to conclude, no, we're not dumbing Linux down. We're making Linux more accessible to the general public. And this means that there are some compromises that have to be made, but technical power users can deal with these compromises relatively easily, where beginners could not deal with the roadblocks that implementing these compromises lifted. It's a transfer of the complexity of using Linux, less complexity for beginners, more complexity for technical and power users, which are better equipped to deal with that complexity anyways. Now, if you want to be super well equipped to deal with complexity, then you should definitely check out today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany. They make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. Their range of devices is huge, from the biggest gaming desktops to NUX to smaller laptops, ultrabooks, gaming laptops. They have configuration options for every device, which are super, super extensive. And you also have a wide range of keyboard layouts and a choice of the distro that you want to install out of the box. Of course, you can still install your own after that. They recently refreshed their Stellaris 15, which is their high-end production or gaming laptop with RTX 3080s, 12th gen Intel CPUs, 
and a great optomechanical keyboard, which is the single best keyboard I used on the laptop ever. It's got a 3K panel, tons of IO, it's not that heavy for what it does, it looks really cool, and you can even engrave your own logo on the back. I should receive a review unit pretty soon and I might even buy it for my own on-the-go needs for video editing. So if you need a new device running Linux out of the box, definitely do click on the link in the description below and check out Tuxedo, they are really cool. So thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, and if you didn't like it, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. If you want to support the channel, you can also join my Patreon or become a YouTube member. Both of these get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover on the channel. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!